Okay, so I decided, eh, maybe I should start videotaping this, videotaping, recording this. <laughs> um, I'm old school, dudes. VHS is still in my head. Um, anyways, I thought I'd start recording this. Um, basically, this video is going to be how to install a four-post lift by yourself. Here's a picture of what this looked like when I got it. And um, basically, here's how it looks now. As you can see, all the middle pieces and everything are now taken out. What I'm left here with is the uh, two um, ramps that the car sits on. Well, not the ramps, but you know, the, the, uh, the area the car sits on in the middle of the four posts. So this is, these are the heaviest parts of this whole assembly. So in order to help me, with that, I have this two-ton hoist, and I also have this hydraulic jack, which has been very handy, very dependable. So here's what I did so far. As you can see, all the pieces from the middle and everything um, are already taken out, and those were the four posts and um, the support um, beams. Um, I'm probably not saying the right things, but you know what I mean. So anyways, completely disassembled. Um, the four posts were held on by screws on the sides, just like these are right here. So basically what I did is um, I used the hydraulic jack to get underneath um, these four posts. I loosened the screws and then I kind of pulled them out a little bit from the middle to let the hydraulic jack get some space underneath them just to hold them balanced kind of in the air while I unscrew the four screws that hold them to the sides See right here those are held on and once I got the screws out I pulled them out with a hydraulic jack one by one and uh, picked them up and moved them here they're heavy but they're not so heavy that I needed some help moving them so that's what I did there the same with these pieces these were in the middle I pulled these out, again, using the hydraulic jack to help me out, um, just to keep them balanced in the air while I pulled them out. And then I just laid them on these little dollies and moved them here. The casters are kind of heavy. Those are in the middle. Those came out first, actually. Um, they, were, they were loose, so it was just a matter of pulling them out, untangling them and pulling them out. So, you know, this piece was on top. The uh, hydraulic, um, which we call it, was on top. Um, these uh, car ramps are steel; they're not aluminum. I was I cheap skated out, didn't buy the aluminum ones. Um, for as little use as I'm going to be getting out of this, I didn't see the value of spending three hundred, four hundred dollars for aluminum ones. So these are kind of heavy, um, but nothing you can't handle yourself. You'd need to know how to handle them yourself, anyways, if you're going to be using the lift on your own. So that's where we're at. It's completely took out all of the parts. The part that's left is the, uh, the heavy pieces. And so that's where I'm going to throw this on a tripod tomorrow when I start. Um, well, the first things first, we assemble the four posts and get all that stuff done. This is pretty much, you know, the, uh, the last pieces that need to be put on. So all right, so stay tuned. I'll throw this on a tripod, let it time lapse. And um, yeah, if there's any weird things along the way, people, from what I read on, and seen on YouTube, you know, the instructions aren't all the best, but I beg to differ. I went through the instructions. They look, they look pretty okay, unless they've changed them for the better. Um, you know, I, I didn't see any issues with them. Everything seems pretty straightforward. So we'll go through this um, little by little and um, hopefully you'll get something out of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, these lifts have come down in price quite a bit. They're pretty affordable now. So, you know, I think this one was 4,300, something like that. I mean, it's relative, of course, what's affordable, but in the grand scheme of things, I always wanted a lift and could never really see the sense of spending, you know, eight grand on one. 
So here I am, and yeah, like I said, I think this is something that I can do myself without, um, without real help from my friends. Um, so it'll be nice to surprise them when they come over and see the new garage with the lift installed in it. I'll be getting the cabinets um, in a couple of weeks, and then that should wrap up the garage. Yeah, so you haven't seen me posting any computer YouTube videos or anything like that for a while because this is what I've been working on for the past few months. So, yeah. Stay tuned and uh, let's get this party rocking. Okay, some things to get started. I lined all of these up. Um, first thing we're going to do here with these is we're going to lay these on their side both of these and then we're going to slide these um, ends in so these guys here will slide inside the channel here and once we do that then we'll install the side plates inside these little squares are what holds the catch to keep the uh, runways from sliding down so that's what we're going to do first so we're going to install these on the ends um, one other thing you need to know that I've done already is I've attached a hydraulic hose to the side here okay there's a jam nut right here in the back you just screw it from the sides here and then you make sure that this is tightened okay the other thing that I did because this will come in useful later is I extended the hydraulics out all the way um, I did it by pulling on this and pulling the cord the cables out the cables need to come out the sides here on each side so the ends of the cables look like this Make sure there's a washer and a lock nut and you'll see I mean you just got to pull them out from the sides there and I didn't pull this all the way I left about a foot between here and the end here so that way the cables were out really easy this already came assembled with the cables I know there are models products out there where you need to put the cables in and if that's the case you'd have to loosen this in order for this plate in the front here to move around allowing you to slide the cables in so and the, the cables didn't already come like this one did already basically assembled so to speak note that there are different length cables so this cable here for example goes all the way down that's the length of it there's the cable, it's almost to the other end, okay? Whereas on the other hand, this cable here, on this side, only comes about halfway down. So keep in mind that there's a couple of different cable lengths, so make sure you read the literature for your lift. Make sure you've got the cable lengths correct. Okay, so there you go. Let's put this on the tripod and start putting this together. Um, there are black um, bolts that go to the end, so I'm sure they're gonna be in this bag here. Um, those are the ones that go on the end. Also, make sure that these little um, things that stick out here are on the inside. Okay, you can see the other side has two screws with a, um, a little pin that sticks out. This side doesn't have screws at all. And it has that large, I don't know, you want to call it a pulley, but anyways, that's the outside, that's the inside. Make sure you get that right. Also be careful where you put the, uh, the mount for the hydraulic. Mine is on the front. If I look at this from the front, mine is on the front 
right. You can only put this on two corners. It's either this side or all the way on that side. Why? Because when you lay the runway down, the hydraulic nipple here, the output, input, whatever you want to call it, um, is on the one side. So when you roll this over, because we're looking at it from the bottom, so when you roll this over, that's either going to be on the front right, or if you have it turned 180 degrees, it's going to be on the front left. So make sure that you've got the, uh, the part that holds uh, the hydraulic motor um, correct. The other three posts are basically the same. So that's the one you need to keep account for. All right, so let's do this. I don't think this will take more than a few weeks, right? No, <laughs> I don't think this will take more than a day or two. I'm not going to do it all in one shot. So, you know, um, so be patient. And uh, anything that comes up, I'll make sure I mention it. That way you can pretty much put a lift together regardless of the brand. They're all basically, basically the same. All right, stay tuned. Okay. So these guys, this is where the cable is going to go here. And you'll be able to see the pulleys on the inside. So this has to go to the inside. Okay. So you know that. So, and then this is where the... Um, the brace that we just put in, the, the, I don't know what these things, the ladder, if you want to call it, um, gets bolted on onto here. So, let's go ahead and get this in place. Okay, so these are the screws that we're going to use. There's four of these um, screws. These are, <laughs> these are the bolts that we're going to use. 
there's four of these that will hold down the plates um, at the top <clears throat> on each side. So it's gonna be the bowl to washer. It's gonna go through and then on the other side is a spring washer and the uh, nut. So, okay. So let's get to some detail here. So you know how this is gonna roll. So as you can see, this is going to go on the left. I'm going to spotlight the, the left post, the left rear post here. You can see where the pulley is here. That's where the cable is going to come up once we lay the runway down. You can see this is caught on to the first opening on the ladder. And I'm going to be pulling that up so you can hear a click and, and know that it's... Uh, it's secured there. Um, if you come up here, <clears throat> you can see how this plate goes. You can see that this goes in the middle towards the end here. That holds the ladder. Okay, the ladder bar. And this opening here is where the cable is going to slide in here once we put the runways in. This has four nuts and bolts, two on the side, one on each other. There's one on the other side here. The camera can pick that up. So this, there's uh, 16 of these bolts. You can't miss them. That's how you'll know it's the right bolts. There's 16 of these. You're going to find 32 washers. Why? Because it's a bolt, a washer, and then on the other side, I don't know if you can see that, there's another washer, which is the same as the one in the front. That's going to be your 32 washers. And then there's a split washer. There's going to be 16 of those. It's black. Basically, um, it will keep the nut from, uh, un, un, from loosening. So, and then there's the nut. There's 16 nuts. Again, you can't miss these because there's only... There's, it's the only screw that's there's 16 of them. <laughs> and... There's the only washers, well, I don't think they're the only washers, but the washers, you'll know which washers fit in here. There's 32 of them. Actually, there was 33. There was one extra. So that's how these get bolted on, is a bolt, a washer on the other side, a washer, a split washer, and the bolt. Okay? And then this, basically, if you're not careful, this ladder bar here will slide all the way to the bottom, and that's not what you want. So... You want to make sure, at least on my case, I made sure there was about a little bit over a quarter inch of thread on the top. Um, this will come in handy if you need to adjust these to level out the uh, ladder bars, which will level out the braces. Okay, so here there's a bolt underneath. Okay, that's the jam bolt. And then, uh, or a jam nut, I should say. Sorry, there's a nut underneath. That's a jam nut. And then there's a washer. It should already have come uh, pretty much attached, you know, to the ladder, you know, to the ladder here. Um, and then there's a nut on the top. So you're going to kind of keep these a little bit loose until you're satisfied that um, the, this bar is level. So the other one, I don't know if you can see from here, is about the, the same height. This is level. We've already measured it. So once you do that, um, this can tighten on the bottom. It should already be snug on the top, so you really shouldn't need to have to tighten it. And then you tighten the top bolt here. Okay? And then you can see how this will line up with that bottom pulley. That's how you know that you have this installed correctly okay so here in the instructions here it tells you 9 10 11 12 which is the top here and 9 10 11 12 um, are the correct uh, are the correct items there's a flat washer there's the hex bolt there's the spring washer and then there's the uh, hex nut. But what it doesn't tell you is that you need two washers. 
That you kind of have to derive from the picture up here. There's a bolt, there's the washer, there's the washer, there's the split washer, and there's the nut. <laughs> but here, it doesn't quite tell you that. It just tells you, hey, 9, 10, 11, 12. It should really put um, 9 and then 2 times 10 or whatever the washer is, and then 11 and 12. So those are the little nuances that I think people, when they say these instructions suck, um, those are the things. But if you laid out all the nuts and bolts, you'll kind of understand how this all pieces together. So these are the nuts and bolts we have left. You can see how I laid them out here. So we're gonna be dipping into these to put the rest of this together. You can see here as well. You know these are the bolts that are gonna go to the um, end where one the, the, the runways. So we're not gonna use these. These are the anchors if you want to anchor the four posts to the cement. But since we have these casters, one reason I like these uh, four lifts is that I can move this four lift, um, four post lift around the garage if I need to move them over to the other side or what have you. And just know one thing. Um, if you do move this, so this is going to work off of 110 volts. If you're going to move this, make sure you keep um, within the distance of the cable, the 110 cable to this. If you put an extension cord in, make sure you use a very thick extension cord because this thing's going to draw, I think, like 30 amps. And, um, and you'll fire the motor if you use a very thin extension cord. I'll tell you that right now. So... Just keep that in mind if you're going to move this around and start plugging it in everywhere. And don't try not try not to throw an extension cord on there if you don't have to. Okay, so there we go. That's the detail. Let's get to the rest of this, and then I'll just fill in with more detail as we go along. All right. So stay tuned. So I'm going to lift this up so it catches onto the first uh, safety hole there on the ladder. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then you're gonna hear it click. So you wanna hear both sides click because if this kind of goes up at a little bit of an angle, one's gonna click first. So you wanna hear two clicks, one on each side, right? So now I'm going to measure 162 inches from the inside of that brace to the inside of this brace. 162 inches on the inside, that's what I need for the runways to slide in and have enough of a lip coming out over the braces. There you go, 166 inches. So now we're ready to uh, put the runways on. And um, yeah, I could get three friends or so to help me with it, but I have a hoist. So let's see if we can just do this ourselves without hurting ourselves. So stay tuned. Okay, here's the game plan. 
I'm going to lift the top, which will lift the side braces or the side things that are holding it in place, just enough so where the bottom is touching the blocks there on both of these sides. Then I'm going to unscrew the bottom runway on both sides. And that should uh, free up the bottom front way. And then once that's free, I'll see if I can pull it out. And then I'll lower the top runway with the braces down. Um, or I may just go ahead and, yeah, I think I gotta bring it down because I don't know how balanced it is with the way that I have this set up right now. All I know is that I've been able to move this top piece up, well, the whole assembly up with the way that it's braced right now. Um, yeah, so, First things first, let's go ahead and undo the bottom. Um, I'm afraid of undoing the top first and pulling it out only because it is really, really heavy. Those straps are rated for a thousand pounds, but um, you know, I don't trust them and I don't want this thing falling on me. So. Let's start unscrewing some of these bolts and see what we've got here. All right, I'm gonna put this on the tripod and that way you can see what's going on. Hold on.
des Winters. Okay, so now that we've got this on the braces, um, it's time to flip it over. So I'm putting straps along these tabs here on the top, and I'll put another strap to make sure that they're held in place, but basically I'm going to pull this up and it's going to rotate this this way, and it's going to give me some equilibrium there, even though it's also going to be holding on to the braces here you know like so and then uh, I'll kind of nudge it towards the back as I'm pulling the the hoist back and let it come down this way and then that way I should end up getting it flat this is the worst of the two because it's the heaviest and yeah, I mean, if you have friends, now would be a good time. This is what you'd need them for. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of late, so let's see if we can do this ourselves. Okay, wanted to pause the video here really quick to show you what I've done here. I put it in a couple of clamps on this side of the runway. So when I start bringing it down on this side, it doesn't slide. So I'll pull the uh, hoist. I'll pull the hoist back um, as I'm bringing it down. But it... So the next thing we're going to do is put this runway on there, but this one will be a lot simpler. It doesn't weigh much compared to the other one. So we'll get to this one next. I'll probably just go ahead and turn this over on the ground and then just uh, use the hoist to push it in there. 
All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so the bolts that are gonna be used, two on each side. Here's the bolt. And we're gonna put a washer. Oops. Washer on it. Then we're gonna slide the bolt through. Then on the other side, we're gonna put another washer. And you're gonna put a spring washer on that. Okay. And then you're gonna tighten it up with the nut. Okay, so that's how it's gonna roll. Okay. And you got the other side. Okay. And then we tighten them down. <laughs> and like I said, when this is all said and done, after they're tightened down, when you put the car on here, you're gonna slide this, and you see, you're gonna slide that in there, and that's gonna present, prevent the car from uh, running off the runways. All right, so let me go ahead and tighten these down let me put that uh, other runway on here and then we'll continue where we left off. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the sucky part about Chinese made stuff. You see that gap right there? So these screws, that these bolts that go in here are pretty tight. I mean, by tight, I mean, they're um, pretty short in length. You don't have a whole lot of thread. This pretty much takes away almost a quarter inch of thread because of how it sits, which totally bites. So I can either grind it down and re-weld, or I can leave one washer off and just use the, uh, the spring. Um, so anyways, so I have to save myself a little bit of space if I'm gonna do this, so that's what I'm gonna do. Anyways, thought you might wanna laugh about that one. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so today we're going to put that second runway on here. So let's strap this up. The game plan is to strap this up and lift it from here, and this will slide up. And then we can move this over and lay it down. Well, here we go. More Chinese quality issues. So this bolt here is getting stuck.
sucks that you have to do this. But the weld on here is good. The problem is that the angle of this plate is a little bit, the plate is exactly 90 degrees with this. And so that angle is causing it to hang over the hole a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and uh, and then we don't have much left actually. Okay, next we're gonna basically go underneath. There's some loops underneath that this is gonna um, slide into. And then they, these three pieces get screwed together. The handle part goes where the hydraulic motor is gonna go. And then you have these two pieces here that are gonna get bolted on as well. So what this assembly does is the handle basically unlatches the uh, braces from the ladder bar. So you're going to need to have one on each side, which is the handle to disengage that one, this end here to disengage this one, and then these two rods, one on each end, disengages from this side. Okay, so that's the theory behind it. You're going to basically use leverage to pull this handle out and it'll disengage all four of the corners from the ladder bar. All right, so let me get the camera underneath and you'll see how this all goes together. It's pretty easy actually. We're almost done because after that we just need to route the cables and then put the hydraulic motor on or the hydraulic pump on and um, and that's pretty much it then we're set outside of just leveling it so stay tuned okay <clears throat> so now we're going to pull the cables through so you have the long cable so here's the runway with the hydraulics you have a long cable coming out and a short cable coming out at both ends the shorter cable is going to go to the post nearest and the long cable is going to come here it's going to route through the second runway here and then it's going to come out this side and we're going to route it through here now in order to route it through here just slide this over and it'll help the cable come through um, the other thing is inside here underneath I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick this up but underneath there's a there's a hole with a thread inside um, that hole with the thread you're gonna to need to screw this into it, this will help guide the cable. So the cable needs to be on top of this. So this has to be underneath the cable. After we put it through, you can, um, you can screw this in. So let's put that aside for now. And this is why, remember at the beginning of the video, we pushed that cylinder out of that hydraulic, um, you know, we pushed it all the way out the reason we did that is to give us the play in these cables to be able to do what we're going to do right now. If we didn't do that, the cable wouldn't be long enough to reach the top of the posts. So that's why we pulled that cylinder out in order to pull the cables all the way out. Okay, so now you know. So what we're going to do first though is unscrew the lock nut. We got the lock nut in the washer, and we're gonna push this. We're push this through from the bottom. Okay, so it's gonna go over. Um, how are we gonna do this? Sorry, it's gonna go under the pulley here. And then it's gonna go on the left, on the right hand side of the top pulley, and then up. Okay? So.
right? So this pulley right here slides. So you're gonna slide it out of the way in order to get the cable through on the right hand side here. Now I'm not sure I can do this while holding the camera. Then I'll give it a quick shot, otherwise I'll put the camera down. Okay, there we go. All right. So once we got the cable through, now you can move the pulley back into place. Okay, so that's how the cable goes through. Make sure that on the bottom, that it's uh, on the pulley on the bottom as well. So that it's not binding between the pulley and the casing. So now we're gonna put the screw from the other side, kind of feel up in there and screw this in so that way the cable doesn't fall below. So this is, the cable's gotta be on top of this screw when we screw it in on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna reach underneath here and feel for that. Okay, so I'm gonna put the camera down, be right back. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, this is looking at this this way. I don't know if you can see there, the screw that we just put in there. It's uh, kind of hard to see here, but it's on the, see my finger is right there? There's the screw that's coming out right there. It was easy to screw in. I didn't need to tap the threads or anything. It went in real nice and smooth. So that will hold the cable. That'll gu help guide the cable and keep it on the pulley. So that screw needs to be screwed all the way in and it'll come out to about there. Okay, so now that we've got that, I don't know if you'll be able to see it from here. I might edit this out if you can't. Okay, so once, now that we have that, we're gonna go up top and put the cable in. Okay. Pull this through. Okay. Get it to the top there. Washer. And the lock nut. Okay, and I'm gonna hold this with a, this, these are millimeters, but this will hold it. I'm gonna hold this with the 5 8 and I'm gonna tighten with the 30 millimeter socket at the top. So, can't do this while holding the camera, so give me a second. Okay, so you can see that's as much as I'm gonna tighten this lock nut because if I need to level this out, I'm gonna raise the part that needs to be leveled out. And if I raise the part that needs to, needs to be leveled out, that means I'm gonna be tightening this lock nut on those posts. So I'm not gonna be loosening any of these lock nuts. So that's why I made them flush. Okay? So if I had a bit of advice, I would probably get 30 millimeter, another washer and a 30 millimeter nut and put a jam nut here. Don't think you need it, but I don't know. I'm, that's the way I would do it. But they didn't supply the nuts or the washers for doing that. So this is the way they drew it out. All right. So I'm gonna do the other four posts, or the, the other three posts, the same way you saw this. The only difference is that the cables are smaller on the other side, or shorter, I should say, on the other side. Um, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, so today we're going to assemble the safety release. So basically there's three rods. There's this rod here, 
there's the rod with the handle and then there's this rod here so basically we take out the jam nut and the um the extension what you call it here that the rods are going to thread into because basically these there's two of these that hold these three rods in together it, it kind of splices the rods is what it does so that way it reaches the full extent of the runway so that rod basically goes through a hole in the runway and then it slips through this right here okay like so and then this nut it's a jam nut basically gets screwed in here and then we screw this in here this will splice the next rod that we're going to be putting in. I'm going to leave these loose for now. We'll tighten them up once we have the length set. And then we put the splice in. Just start turning this and tightening this in. And that'll pull the other end of this rod flush. Okay, next, let's get this assembly going. So we got this uh, middle piece in place that'll keep this from bowing. And we got the rod end tightened down in here. We'll adjust this later. And what we've got here is um, basically the bushing. And by the way, I had to grind out a little tiny bit of excess material inside that wouldn't let the bushing slide all the way in. Welcome to great quality control. So, we've got a nut, a washer, or I should say our bolt and our washer. That goes through. It's really weird. I know that this is the right bolt, but it's really weird that it has so much play within that bushing. You would think the bolt would be a little bit um, more fitting to that bushing. I know it's the right bolt because it's the only bolts that are basically left in the package, and it's the same size as this bolt that's going to be extruding from here. You know, it's just um, this is really odd. I may end up changing these bolts out for better fitting bolts <laughs> so anyways so then the rod end then goes through here and they say that a lock nut the instructions show a lock nut goes here but I have about 12 of these washers that are extra um, well I just dropped it so anyways um, I'm thinking I'm gonna put a washer here and then put the lock nut. So this way I don't tighten the lock nut onto the ball inside the rod end. Okay, so I think that's how it, that's gonna roll. And then we're gonna do the bottom in similar fashion. Let's see if I can find that bolt that there in that washer I just dropped here. Okay. The bottom one goes in the same way. Bushing the bolt with the washer. And this is the short piece here, the 
rod in next. I'm going to attach a small washer to that and then lock it up. Okay, and hard for me to tighten, to hold these and tighten, you know, with one hand here. So I'll do it off camera real quick. So on this side here, you have four of these. So I'm going to use one of these. Okay, you take out the nut. Okay, basically... That's a jam nut that's going to go on the other side. So you're going to screw this in here. Okay. And there's flat spots here for you to hold the wrench while you tighten the jam nut on the other side. Okay. Get that in there real quick. Okay, well, let me do that off camera. It's just easier than trying to do this with one hand. So, we'll need one more rod end here that'll go there. So, let me get that real quick. Another rod end here. And I'm going to line it up. So, I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to put a washer on this side. Put that in there. Washer and then a lock nut. Okay, so we're going to tighten these up. That's the way it's going to roll on this side. And you see, this is going to basically, when you push the handle this way, it'll pull this rod, which will pull the catch over there. And it'll make this um, go to the left here, which will pull the catch from this side. So that's how this works. And then the rod from here that we extended all the way to the other side of the runway, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, where basically this will cause the other side to turn um, and release the catches over there as well. Okay, so that's the deal. So let's tighten this up, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so for the other side here, basically, I already got the rod end already tapped all the way in as far as it'll as far as it'll go here so we have to align this since that's already aligned over there we have to align this rod end to the bolt here which we already put in place so we're going to unscrew a little bit this way from the other rod end and then we're going to screw a little bit of this rod end so the threads are kind of even inside the rod ends on both sides all right um, so what I'm going to do here is the same as the other side I'm going to put a washer in here and then the rod end And then the lock nut. And just so you know, I'll tighten this off camera. Just so you know, um, I do have a hydraulic jack underneath the crossbeam here, just in case I would have pushed this in and um, unlatched the uh, the safety latches so okay better safe than sorry all right I'm gonna tighten these and then we'll get to the other side
Okay, so on this other side, basically it's almost a duplicate of the side we already did. Bolted on the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, that, that stay there for the rod end. Um, and then put a washer on one side, the rod end, a washer, and a lock nut. So here, same story as the other side as well. The larger washer on that side to put the bolt and then a washer and a lock nut on the front side. And other side is the same. Okay, so I think this part is done. So the only thing we have left to do at this point is to put in the uh, hydraulic motor and yeah, and see if this works. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so today I think we're ready for the hydraulic pump here. Um, so I already mounted, well, I didn't mount this, but I already took this out of the package. And what I did, I didn't get this on camera because I, well, I just didn't get it on camera. Um, anyways, I put two bolts on the top here, kept them loose, and they slide right in to the top on both sides. So there's a, um, a bolt, a washer on this side, and I just pushed it out a little bit. There's a washer and a lock nut on this side. So leaving a little bit of a gap between both washers allowed me to kind of just lift this up. It's a little heavy, but not that heavy. Lift this up on both sides and slide the bolt in um, from the top here with the washers. The washers fit through this hole as well. And that's where I'm at right now. So I'm just gonna tighten this up and then I'm gonna install the same thing, um, bolt, washer, washer, lock nut on the bottom as well. So how this fit here, note where I had to put the placement of the bolt. Um, skip these top one, two, three holes and had to put it on the fourth in order for the bottom hole to line up um, with the bracket. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten that up and then we'll put the hose in. And um, the other thing that I did is the uh, the cord on this is only like about, you know, a three feet, three foot cord. Um, the power plug is there. It's not gonna reach the power plug. And I wanted a little bit more spacing. So I went to a Harbor Freight and I got this. Um, extension cord is 10 gauge. Um, you could probably get away with 12 gauge. Um, but I wanted the thickest cord I could find um, that's not too lengthy. 25 feet is the smallest length that I could find. But anyways, the 10 gauge is important because this cord is really, really thick and can handle, you know, the amperage that I'm going to be putting to it. Um, the maximum amperage on this is 15 amps, according to the um, uh, um, according to the box, according to the label which we should be able to get away with. So, all right. Bottom line is get as thick of an extension as you can and then make it as short as possible. All right, so let's get this tightened up here and we can get this going. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's not going anywhere. All right. So the next thing, I'm going to move this camera around because we need to put in the hydraulic hose. Okay, so on this side, let's get this out of the way. I'm going to unscrew this right here. So this already came this way. Okay, there's two washers. There's a... Um, a rubber washer actually, then there's two metal washers underneath, and then there's the jam nut here. And we're gonna want this pointing down for the hose. Okay, so. And you don't wanna over tighten this. You want that rubber washer to be tight, but not, I mean to be snug, but not over tightened.
Okay, so we're gonna position it like that and then we can tighten this and that'll tighten up that rubber washer a little bit. Again, snug tight, but not over tight, otherwise you can crush that washer. And this kit did provide two additional rubber washers, so that's a good thing. Okay, I think that's good there. Okay, and we attach the hose to it. Now the hose, you don't need any thread, uh, any thread lock or anything like that, or um, tape, I should say. Um, it's already has a recess in it that'll grab itself onto the elbow here. Just want to make sure that. goes in nicely. You don't want to strip the threads here. Okay. This one you do kind of want a little bit tight. And again, you don't need to have it that overly tight, just a bit tight there, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go to the runway. Okay, here for the bottom, now there's one of these puppies here. This you don't really need to use, so there's two fittings, the elbow and this guy, that um, would have gone on the pump, but I didn't include this one, I don't need it. I used the elbow on the pump instead and it routes the hydraulic line just fine. Adding this to me would have just added one more point of leaking. <laughs> okay, so here, there's already a ball bend here and this is already here recessed as well, so this is ready to go. So we'll just tighten this up and that, and that should be good enough. Okay. So where the motor is, I bent it out outward just a little bit more like that so the hose will clear the handle here as the runway goes up and doesn't kink all right so I think we're ready to put some hydraulic fluid in here and uh, test for leaks Yeah, so this is a, we got this. Okay, so I'm gonna let this loose a little bit. Okay, it's on the safety ladder there. All right. 
So there we go. What we're going to do now is basically raise it to the top and then level this out at the top. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to raise this to the top and then let it come down for just a little bit, not just um, let it miss the safety latch on the ladder so the hydraulics is holding it up and we'll get on top of it and measure. All right, so let's do that. the top latch right there. So now I'm going to bring it down just below that, uh, that top latch. I'm going to put a little weight on it. So. Okay. So now it's just below that top latch. So what we do now is we're going to measure. I'm going to measure between here and the next and the floor. And I'm going to do that on all four. And that will I'll know if I need to raise any of these corners by tightening that bolt that's holding the cable. Um, I can raise any of the corners for it to be level. Um, also, just a note. This comes with these drip plates, these little plastic plates that you put underneath here that's um, held by these guys. Um, I'm not going to put it in because I want to see if this thing ever leaks. I don't want to guess, you know, or have the drip plates there um, catching hydraulic fluid and not knowing if it's leaking or not. So I'm not going to put them in. But some people do because aesthetically it might be more pleasing, but um, I I'm not going to bother. So we're all level. They all measure 68 and a half plus an eighth from the bottom of the post. back up and measure again one more time just all right so there you go the finished product this was an easy build I mean I, I did it over a few days but if you do this yourself you could probably do this in a day and uh, if you have friends half a day um, the biggest challenge is where the heavy pieces like the runway with the hydraulics is kind of heavy um, but anything else you know was manageable um, and I'm an old guy, you know, I'm going to be 60 this year. So for me to do this, you know, by myself, you know, it just kind of shows that there's, um, um, it's not, uh, it's not something that's, that you can't meet the challenge for. Um, 
This um, is a tuxedo brand, just so you know. Um, and the reason I went with tuxedo is uh, Home Depot. Um, you can buy a, a tuxedo four lift or four post lift through Home Depot. And the cool thing about that is, like I said, I wanted to do everything myself. So if you buy a four post, um, from a supplier, they're going to require that you have a forklift at your house. Either that, or you're going to have to deliver it to a freight station, and then you're going to have to go pick it up. Um, so you're still going to need to have a trailer and then something to take it off the trailer with. <laughs> so anyways, the reason I went with the tuxedo is I had to deliver to the Home Depot store because my local, not all Home Depots do this, so you have to check with yours, but my Home Depot has home delivery, forklift home delivery. So basically for a price, a small price, it was like under a hundred bucks, they um, will deliver it to your home and they have a forklift on the truck that'll take it off and drop it. So literally I did this by myself from ordering all the way to this. So now Tuxedo, you know, their products, um, it's Chinese. Now, you, you, there's a bunch of different brands out there that are all basically the same. Would I use this in a commercial setting? Absolutely not. <laughs> Um, I'm a Ben Pack um, fan, and if you put a Ben Pack next to this, um, it's night and day. You, you, there is no comparison. You shouldn't even bother. Um, but the Ben Pack costs, you know, almost more than twice as much. So, you know, for the money, if you're a do-it-yourself home guy, you know, um, small time, whatever, this is a great lift. And even if you use it for storage, you store a car on the top, you put the oil pans the drip trays there and then put another car underneath and you just doubled your parking spot but um this will come in handy a few of you know that i have you know muscle cars um they're all clean <laughs> so i don't they don't ever need much repairs but every once in a while there's a little bit of a challenge and maybe i'll start making some videos with those but uh yeah so what I've been doing for the last few months is building this garage and that's why you haven't seen any, you know, videos and certainly not computer videos, right? But I think I'm going to go back to that for a little while. Um, but before I sign off here, I just want to give a little bit of shout out. Now these folks didn't ask me to, they didn't provide anything for this video or anything like that. I'm small time, you know what? I got 550 subscribers, something like that. Um, there's no need for them, but Race Deck is the tile that you see here, racedeck.com. They humbled me in 2018 by giving the garage that's attached to the house here um, a Garage of the Year award, which I was, um, like I said, blown away with. But I've used Race Deck for many years, even before, and I love the product. This took me, you know, half a day to put in. Um, just so easy. Uh, as you can probably figure out, I like to do things myself. So. Uh, a big shout out to Race Deck. Um, they did give me a return customer consideration, gave me a little bit off, which I really appreciated. And they're such such nice folks. And this is new for me. I haven't used this product before. Again, they they don't know I'm doing this. Um, this is Pro Slat um, Pro. This is an amazing thing. As I, you can mount this over drywall. You still have to mount it to the studs. There's plenty of videos. If you go to proslat.com, you can see the videos on how this stuff is installed. It's awesome because it's all channeled. Um, and it, this has this is the Pro, the premium product. It has a carbon fiber texture feel look to it. It also comes in black, which is even more carbon fiber-ish, so to speak. But this, uh, you know, you can move the shelves around, you can move the hooks around. This is the premium product, which has the metal bracing. So I think it holds like, you know, 200 pounds a square foot or something like that. <laughs> Um, it's, it's an amazing product. So anyways, big shout out. Um, they were nice enough to provide me some free hooks and I told them that I was a first time customer and the amount of pro slap that I ordered considering the number, you know, the walls that I have here. Um, they were nice enough to give me, um, a, a, some free products as the, the hooks and everything are a little expensive, but, um, yeah. So just wanted to give a shout out to those two products as I really, really love them and definitely, um, tell my friends about them and definitely will continue to use them in the future. So anyways, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video to a degree. I know it was lengthy, but I hope it covered some of the details that the instructions for these four post lists don't give you. And um, yeah, so like I always say, you only live once. Enjoy every day like it's your last and be happy. Peace out.